Hello friends and family and welcome to the Wednesday edition of the Crippling Anxiety Fireside Chat. I haven't uh, began begun with the caveat in a few days now, uh, the caveat being that I am not a meditation teacher and this is not meditation instruction. Um, this is mostly just a discussion and Q&A about meditation and things surrounding meditation. Today, I wanted to talk about how we perceive other meditators. And uh, it's a bit of a follow-up to yesterday's comment around posture, that at a certain point in your meditation practice, you will find, and others also find, that your posture becomes completely still. Your body is completely still and unmoving in a way that you will find very surprising when it happens for the first time. Um, and even inside, you find your muscles are not twitching or tensing or moving uh, at all. It is this state, which is pretty accessible, um, almost everyone that I can think of would experience this on their first 10-day Vipassana course at least, um, if not in their home practice. This state is quite different from the way those very same meditators, be they you or I or anyone else, uh, will feel and behave the rest of the time. So if uh, someone is washing the dishes, going for a run, uh, going to the gym, um, hanging out with their family, they're not going to be motionless, but they are also not going to necessarily have the kinds of experiences and revelations that a person has in deep meditative states on the surface of their mind when they're in those other circumstances. And I bring this up because um, it, become, it can be very easy for us to judge other meditators based on their uh, apparent behavior or their apparent demeanor. And um, as I mentioned before, there's really no way to evaluate another person's meditation. Is it helping them? Is it helping them to be healthier? Is it helping them to behave in uh, a friendlier and more productive way? Well, we don't know. Uh, we need to know um, every state they've been in since the beginning of their meditation practice, which obviously is either difficult or impossible. Um, but more Specifically, we tend to look at people who have meditated seriously, meditated for a lot of years, and if we see them do something that we don't like, we often are quicker to judge than uh, we might be if that person were not a meditator at all, whatever that means. Um, it becomes tempting to expect sainthood from the sorts of people who practice a lot of meditation, who attend a lot of meditation retreats, um, but this simply won't be the case. You are probably not um, in an unfair position to expect uh, a very high caliber of behavior to set a very high bar for those who have dedicated their lives to this. So if you meet monks or nuns who are essentially um, meditating all the time, this is the purpose they've given to their life is to meditate, uh, assuming they're even that um, type of uh, monastic. It's not necessarily unfair to expect that they will behave um, in quite a different way than lay people will because they are constantly working at this. Even while they are eyes open and talking, they are still trying to keep as much of their attention as possible inside 
and to continue meditating, to continue working on this process, even while they engage in the mundane activities of life, having conversations, eating their food, everything else. This is not easy and um, it's even harder for those of us who choose a lay life, a uh, life of a householder. And if we have a home and we have a car and we have a spouse and we have a job, um, there are a lot of other things weighing on us other than simply our meditation practice. So it's highly unlikely that anyone you meet in that position, a householder who is a serious meditator, will behave like a saint. Uh, someone who's known them their whole lives may compare and say, well, yes, okay, compared to when they were 20 years old or 25 years old, now they're a saint. But to you, um, you're setting a kind of uh, infinitely high bar for sainthood. I know I do this with people when I meet them. I, I expect them to behave in certain ways and um, speak in certain ways. And I'm quite surprised when they do not, if they have a serious meditation practice. Um, but that's on me. I shouldn't be making these expectations of other people. Um, and we can, when we realize that we're doing this, we can reflect on it and look at our own meditation practice. So, okay, what's the, the calmest and most peaceful I've ever felt in deep meditation? And how often do I feel like that afterward? Um, it doesn't continue indefinitely. The goal of the meditation itself is to train our minds to behave a little more like that, a little more calm, a little more equanimous, a little more peaceful all the time by default to change this habit. Um, but it takes a very long time. Um, it's kind of neat that you can do it at all, uh, but it doesn't happen overnight for us or for anyone else that we might run into. So I would encourage you to keep that in mind as you find other meditators to meditate with and as you explore different practices and different schools and you wind up meeting other teachers and other students of meditation, uh, try to be gentle with them. Um, that is all for today. And today will be the last day that I put up the links to the two uh, instructional videos um, explaining how to download the Dhamma.org app and how to uh, download the mini Anapana meditation instructions into that app so that you can try that out um, for your own daily practice of Anapana. Um, I may put them up periodically after this just as a reminder um, in case anyone hasn't tried them out in the weeks ahead, but um, for now, this will be the last day for that. I hope you are taking care of yourselves and your families, and we will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.